Can I disconnect the battery? Oh, we got it. Uh, what's special about the electric stuff is that anyone can do it right now. I mean, there's everything's accessible. It's not just a big OEM game. Like you can build this in your garage. At times, a lot easier than doing a gas style one. There's not as many fluids. It's less moving parts, and it's pretty basic once it comes down to it. Uh, my name is Shay Nyquist, and I'm on a mission to break the electric streamliner land speed record. This bike is an electric streamliner land speed bike, and it's it's typically a little bit longer than your normal bike. It's probably about 20 feet in total. Um, that's because it has to be as skinny and smooth as possible. Um, it's not a ride-on bike. It has a cockpit here that you sit inside of. Um, for the higher speeds and the safety purposes, you have to have a seven-point submarine harness. And there's no handlebars. There's actually a tiller system that controls the front wheel. Um, the main difference between this and a normal streamliner is the drivetrain here. These are 22 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. I have uh, 200 kilowatts of energy. Um, that equates to about 250 horsepower. Um, and I have my own custom battery disconnect unit. Other than that, um, it's basically the same thing as a motorcycle. <laughs> two wheels, two tires, um, minus the parachutes. Um, I've been an electric vehicle enthusiast for, I don't know, almost a decade, just kind of following it through the years. And uh, more recently, I got a job as a mechanical engineer for lithium ion battery systems. So I've been following it a lot more closely. I've been in the scene and uh, it's really exciting to see how the development of electric can mature, and once it does, the efficiencies are gonna way outweigh what the gas stuff has right now, and that's really exciting to be a part of. I think the main reason I'm doing this project is to prove to myself that I can. Uh, my wife and I went to Bonneville a couple of years back, and um, I thought all of this was complete rocket science, but when I went and saw a lot of the guys that were running the, the fastest motorcycles, I realized like this is all stuff that I could do in my garage, and it got me really excited to come home and kind of look over a design, like try and figure out how it would all go about doing it. And, and once I got into it, I realized I had all the components and I had all the abilities to do it. And I just felt like this overwhelming passion and need to fulfill this. For me, this is kind of a life goal and it's gonna feel real good getting in there and going, breaking a record. As far as design development of the vehicle, uh, it's been an ongoing process of just tweaking between computer-aided drafting and reality of what you can actually build. So I started with the general size of my shoulders to make sure that this was the smallest area. Uh, when it comes to aerodynamics, the cross-sectional area is, is kind of important or most important. So I measured my shoulders, I laid myself out in CAD, and then I put all the components back behind it and basically just fit them in that space of what my body shape shadow was. So you can see it's extra long and you know, this wouldn't be the normal configuration for a motorcycle, but this is how it has to work to fit into the constraints of the shadow of my body. As far as like uh, choosing components for the bike, I was definitely very limited. A lot of this stuff is still in its prototype period, so it's very expensive. So I basically salvaged and scrapped as much as I could to, to get what was best suited for this vehicle. Obviously you want the most powerful, you want the most uh, lightest stuff, but sometimes you have to compromise for what's available. So the battery chemistry is lithium ion phosphate that's a little bit older, much more reliable, very powerful, but it's a little worn out. So this is definitely something that could use an upgrade. The motor's maybe about 10 years old as well, but it still has a decent amount of power and it functions properly. So everything that's been sourced on this vehicle has been based on what's available and what I can afford because this is a personal project and I'm not, you know, super rich or anything, I'm doing this in my garage. From there, once I've chosen a part, you know, the design just falls out of it. The tubes float around it, and all of that can be done here with benders, welders, torches, and if something doesn't work properly when it comes in there or doesn't look, doesn't fit in the CAD model, then I actually just kind of, you know, free float it in hand by here, and I cut it out, weld it, and then sometimes I'll go back and fix it in CAD, sometimes I won't. But it's definitely been a fun process, and the, all of the issues with land speed stuff are just way beyond what your normal car design manufacturing um, requirements are. So it's a really fun experiment in math and physics, which is my favorite part. Physically, what I need, um, there's a lot of safety stuff that I haven't really purchased yet. And a lot of that stuff is big ticket item that's based on the rules for SCTA. So I need uh, a second parachute to go over uh, 175. I need two inch uh, seven point harness submarine belt. I need new high speed tires. Um, I need steering dampeners, a race suit, uh, new gear, and potentially another BMS, a battery management system for that. Yeah, if, if people want to get involved, they can always go to my website. There's a donate button. I'm also setting up a GoFundMe for the project. Um, the links, I guess, will be in the description below or something. <laughs> uh, 
if people want to help with the project, um, you know, subscribing to the YouTube, follow me on Instagram, and I'm also doing a GoFundMe soon. Uh, a lot of the products on the website, like this hat and some other stuff I'm coming out with, they're a little bit overpriced, but all of that profit goes towards this project to make it happen. So deadlines are super close. We got about two months until we're supposed to run. I think next weekend we're gonna take this bike out for its maiden voyage, which I'm really excited about. I've never seen it run on its own. I don't know how it's gonna balance or anything else. So that's gonna be a really nerve wracking and exciting time. And uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully we can push forward. And you know, a lot of this has all been done on my own dime. So it's been pretty stressful and you know, add that stress to the design, driving and manufacturing of it. And it'd be nice to cut a couple things out of that stress load. God damn, dude. Dude, that's I gotta a, take a break real quick. Yeah. Cause I got a little fucking puckery. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, maybe go back over to the... Okay.